ETFs or exchange traded funds are one of the greatest ways to build wealth. The great thing about ETFs is they are for every type of investor. ETFs add diversification, they can lower your risk, and they are great for hands-off investors. Even the great Warren Buffett says index funds or ETFs are a place where every investor should start. In this short clip I'm about to show you, he speaks more to the index funds which are very similar to that of ETFs. Take a look what Warren Buffett says. I think it's the same thing that makes most sense practically all of the time. And and that is to consistently buy an S&P 500 low cost index fund, keep buying it through thick and thin, and especially through thin, because uh, the temptation gets, when you see bad headlines in newspapers, maybe to say, well, maybe I should skip a year or something. So just keep buying it. American business is going to do fine over time. So you know, you know the investment universe is going to do very well. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average went from 66 to 11,497 in one century. And, and, and since that century has ended, it's, it's more or less doubled again. Uh, American business is going to do well. The trick is not to pick the right company. It's to be, because sh- most people aren't equipped to do that. And plenty of times I make mistakes on that. The trick is to essentially buy all the big companies through the S&P 500 and to do it consistently and to do it in a very, very low cost way because costs really matter in investments. Uh, if, if returns are going to be 7 or 8% and you are paying 1% for f- fees, that, that makes an enormous difference in how much money you have on retirement. ETFs and index funds are a lasting investment. And in that clip, although Warren Buffett speaks more closely to the S&P 500, there are a ton of different ETFs and index funds to choose from. But one important note that he spoke to was to be aware of expense fees. And these are the fees that many of these portfolio managers charge. And it's very different based on if it's a passive passively managed ETF or index fund, or a actively managed. You can get a high expense fee, which can really eat into your total returns. And although I'm more of a hands-on investor, being in the markets each and every week, I still allocate roughly 50% of my entire portfolio to ETFs and index funds. And if you're interested in seeing my entire portfolio, then consider subscribing to my weekly newsletter, The Dividend Investor's Edge, which is the number one dividend-focused newsletter on Substack today. I will leave a link down in the description below. So in today's video, this is one I'm really excited about, as it's one that has been requested quite a few times from many of you that view my channel on a regular basis. We will be breaking down the differences between JEPI, which is the JP Morgan, Premium Equity ETF, and SCHD, which is the Charles Schwab U.S. Dividend Equity ETF. And before we begin, could you do me a huge favor and click that like button down below as that is huge for the growth of this channel moving forward, and I greatly appreciate it. With that being said, let's roll the intro. Hey everyone, Mark Rusin here, back for yet another video trying to help you position yourself for success and to be able to build and meet your financial goals. But before we do, here's a quick word from today's sponsor. I would like to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring today's video. The Motley Fool has a ton of great resources and products for investors of all types. Right now, if you go to fool.com, forward slash mark, you could sign up to receive their top 10 stocks to buy right now. Okay, now on to looking at both of these popular ETFs, JEPI and SCHD. In today's video, we will be looking at the makeup of each ETF, looking at their performance, as well as the dividend, top holdings, and starting to break down to determine which of these ETFs is the better buy. With that being said, let's start with JEPI. JEPI is the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF. The ETF trades at $55.68 per share, and they are up 2.26% on the year. JEPI pays a high, a very high yield of 11.77%, and they have an expense ratio of 0.35%, which is not terrible, but on the higher side. JEPI pays its distribution on a monthly basis, something that many retail investors prefer. Looking down here, you can see that the portfolio tries to take a defensive approach to investing using bottom-up research. 
A lot of the ETFs that I talk about on the channel here regularly actually hold positions of individual stocks. Jeppy does that, but they also do additional things, which is how they're able to juice their yield. Jeppy utilizes out of the money S&P 500 call options to help generate such a high yield. They also characterize themselves as a low volatility ETF. And although lower volatility can be nice during rough patches like we saw in 2022, but the way Jeppy is built, it can also cap the upside during a bull market. For those of you unaware, a covered call is where you leverage your current positions with an option. One option equals 100 shares, and these are the options to potentially sell those stocks at a higher price called the strike price. If the stock surpasses that strike price prior to expiration of the option contract, then the option seller, Jeppy in this case, would not partake in any gains above the strike because they agreed to sell the stock at a certain price. So if you sell a stock at a $25 strike and the stock right currently goes from $23 up to $28, you are forced to sell your stock at the $25 strike price. Looking here, this is an interesting graphic that they show here on the bottom of the page, comparing the yield to other indexes or fixed income with bonds. However, if you've watched many of my other videos or follow me on social media, you will often hear me say, do not invest based on yield alone. So here we're looking at a graph that shows the S&P 500 pays a 1.8% yield. A 10-year bond is 3.8% at this time. Global REITs at 4.5%. A US high yield ETF is at 9.7%. And then Jeppy was at 12% at the time they gather this data, which was towards the end of 2022. And if we scroll down, you can see the two managers right now that have over 60 years combined. These are Hamilton and Raphael, who are both managing the day-to-day, -day, the buys and sells within Jeppy. Next, let's take a look at the portfolio. As you can see here, Jeppy has 127 holdings and they have a ton of turnover because they're buying and selling and doing a lot of options buying. But here's in terms of the individual positions that they own. You can see the top 10 positions include Progressive Corporation, ExxonMobil, Abvi, MasterCard, Travelers Insurance, Honeywell International, Bristol Myers Squibb, the Coca-Cola Company, Hershey's Company, and Comcast, with no position accounting for more than 1.58%. As mentioned earlier, Jeppy does not just own these positions, but they also utilize ELNs or equity linked notes, which can be thought of as a combination of fixed income and returns from equities, which can be turned into covered call premiums. There are a ton of nuances that go into these ELNs, which also bring added risk as well. So that is an overview of Jeppy. Now let's turn our attention to SCHD. SCHD is the US Dividend Equity ETF. As you can see here, the objective of the ETF is to track the total return of the Dow Jones Industrial US Dividend 100 Index. This is a well-diversified ETF filled with all types of dividend stocks. We have looked at dividend-focused ETFs in the past, some focus on higher yield, some on dividend growth, but SCHD is much more broad. And it, as we will see in a second, it offers a unique combination of a nice yield and dividend growth. SCHD currently trades at $77.86 and has $46.78 billion in assets under management. The ETF also has a very low expense fee of just 0.06%, making it a very low cost fund. SCHD has a total of 103 positions and is a passively managed ETF. Unlike with Jeppy, which is buying and selling and doing a lot of covered calls, SCHD takes a more passive approach. In terms of the dividend, SCHD pays a quarterly dividend with a dividend yield of 3.29%. So there's a decent yield, not necessarily a high yield, but just a few months back, that yield was up over 3.5%. When it comes to the dividend growth, SCHD has a five-year dividend growth rate of nearly 15%. Next, let's look at performance. Looking here, you can see that SCHD shares are down 3% on the year, but over the past five years, SCHD has outpaced the S&P 500 with a total return of 74%, compared to the S&P 500 just returning 56% over that same time period. Finally, let's head over to the portfolio and look at the top holdings. With SCHD, no position can be more than 4% and no particular sector can be more than 25%, adding to the diversification of this ETF. Top holdings include Verizon Communications, Broadcom, Home Depot, Texas Instrument, Cisco Systems, Merck, BlackRock, 
IBM, PepsiCo, and Coca-Cola. The top sectors include information technology, financials, consumer staples, healthcare, and industrials. So now we know a little bit more about both of these ETFs. In terms of performance, Jeppy is down over 10% on the year. Meanwhile, SCHD is down only 4.5%. In terms of strategy, many of folks would look at these and say, well, they're both dividend-focused ETFs, but I believe they are very different. As we saw, Jeppy takes a much different approach. They are looking more for covered calls to be able to juice that higher distribution. They also pay that distribution on a monthly basis. SCHD is just focused on individual dividend paying stocks. And they are very broad as we saw. They don't just focus on one sector. They don't just focus on one type of dividend stock. They're a broad range. They have a great yield and they also have strong, strong dividend growth. So with Jeppy though, with the covered call, you're gonna get a nice yield, but your upside is also capped. With that, you also have lower volatility. So folks that are looking for more income focus, less volatility, I could see how Jeppy is a great play. But for those looking for taking on a little bit more risk, because you're owning just individual stocks, so you're gonna get a little bit lower yield, but with that comes the risk factor and more volatility. So for me personally, looking to be a long-term investor, I much prefer the strategy that is done by SCHD. That's why SCHD is one of my top holdings in my portfolio, something that I look to add to on a regular basis. However, in the near term, as we approach a recession, I believe both of these ETFs are gonna perform quite well from a total return perspective, but that income is gonna be nice while the economy is slowing down a little bit, interest rates are a little bit higher, so I can see in the short term why Jeppy could be a great play as well. But over the long term, my focus is gonna be on SCHD and making that a top holding in my portfolio moving forward. That's the video that we have for you today, breaking down both of these solid ETFs, very popular ETFs. I hope you got something out of it. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that like button down below, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Take care.